Hello friends, welcome to Core Semantic and welcome to the video tutorial of ASP.NET Web API. In this video, we are going to see the concept of media type formatters. Till now, we have created get request, post request and along with that, we unknowingly use media type formatters. But in this video, we are going to see what is media type formatter and what is the purpose or what is the role of media type formatters in Web API. So first of all, we are going to understand what is media type. Many of you may be aware of this term. Media type is also called as MIME type and basically it describes the format of your message body. Okay, means what kind of data is present in your message body is described by media type and it specifically contains two parts, type and subtype. And these are a few examples like text slash HTML, image slash PNG, application slash JSON or application slash XML. So you might have observed this media type in your request header. Okay. So basically what this media type determines, it determines how your web API will serialize or deserialize the HTTP message body. Okay, I hope you are familiar with the term serialization and deserialization. Okay, so basically what serialization means? You are converting your object into a stream of bytes or I can say you are converting your .NET object to JSON. You are converting your .NET object to XML. This is nothing but what serialization. So that I can transfer this data over the network. And deserialization means what? Exactly opposite of serialization. Means I am converting JSON data or XML data into object form. So it not necessarily means uh, I have to use JSON and XML data. It can be any other data in the plain text form which can be converted to the object form. Okay. Now, which headers are responsible for media type? means how you can specify the media types okay in your request header i have to specify the media type and with the help of this content type and accept header i can specify the media type okay so whenever your http message contains an entity body means you are passing something to your server your request contains some input data okay and you want to tell the server what type of content it is in that case, you can specify the content type header. So with the help of this, you can specify the format of your message body. And this will help the server to pass the content of message body. Means if you are telling along with your request that I'm passing JSON data, so server can understand how to pass the JSON data to its corresponding object. Okay. Now, the next header which is accept header accept header basically tells the server which media type the client wants from the server means what kind of output client expects means client expects the output in the json format suppose another client expects data in the xml format one more client expects data in the text format or html format so with the help of accept header you can mention in which format a data is required means what is my output format how will my output will be represented whether it will be in the json format whether it will be in the xml format etc etc so content type mention in which format your data is in which format your input data is whereas accept header tells in which format my output is going to be so I hope it is clear. We already use this term, but it we did see the association of this term along with a media type. So now we are going to see what is media type formatter. So basically media type formatters are the classes responsible for serializing and deserializing your request and response data. So in web API or in ASP.NET web API, media formatters are the classes. Okay. And their job is to serialize and deserialize your request and 
response data. So basically, if it deals with response data, then that term is associated with serializing. Means you are sending your object in the JSON format or XML format. Okay, and deserializing means you are converting your JSON and XML data in the form of object. Okay, so media type formatters will help Web API to understand the request data format and send the data in the format which client expects. So basically, uh, whenever we are creating a Web API application, we are writing many different different action methods corresponding to our HTTP verb. In that case, till now we didn't try anything. Everything happens automatically, right? Means your Web API is responsible for everything. It converts your data into the XML format. It deserializes your data from XML format to the object format. Okay, you do not have to do anything. So how this happens? So Web API has built-in support for XML, JSON, and BSON, and as well as form, URL, encoded data. Means it automatically converts this kind of data to C# -sharp object, or I'll say .NET object, and vice versa. You do not have to do anything. But suppose if you want to convert something different data means say comma formatted data we have a csv data right comma separated data so if you want to convert comma separated data to the c sharp object or dot net object then definitely that functionality is not provided by default in that case what you can do you can write your own custom media formatter and with the help of that you can serialize and deserialize csv data so definitely uh, creating custom media formatter is not a scope of this video. As we move ahead, we will learn how to create custom media formatter. But I think this concept is now clear. Why, what is media type and what is media type formatter and as well as which part of your request is responsible for defining this. So let us quickly see this practically. So here I'm using the same uh, Web API application that we have created, that is Web API basics. And we have a product controller. And if you remember, we have one get all method, which represent our HTTP get, and it returns all the products. So currently we have three products. So basically what we are doing here, we have created a list of products, which is nothing but one collection, which is nothing but a object in .NET. Okay, but whenever this response is sent to the client, it will get either converted or serialized to JSON format or XML format. Okay, so let me run this application. We will quickly see this. So our application is up now. Now what I'm going to do, I'm switching to Postman. And here in history, we already have this method. Okay, I'm just choosing it from here. So we have a get request and this is our URL. And what will I do? I'll say send. So here you are getting the output in the JSON format. Why? Because in the request header, we specify the accept header as application slash json and here if i say instead of json if i say xml and then i hit a send so my expected result is in the xml format so here with the help of accept header i specify the media type as application slash xml and then dot net media formatters serialize it into the xml form okay now suppose if i'm sending any data along with a request and i want to tell server or web api that i'm sending this data in specific format so in that case definitely i have to try the post request and if you remember in last video we already tried this so here 
it is our post request let me show you in the visual studio so this is our post request create here we are passing the product object okay let us switch to postman so here along with message body i am specifying that i am sending data in the json format and how we can send it at that time my content content type is what application slash json so with the help of this content type header i mention the media type as application slash json now what dot net media formatter will do by determining this content type it will deserialize this json data to dot net object okay so let us try this we are expecting the same object back and okay response okay as per the code we are just returning the same object back so i hope uh, you enjoyed this video and you understood this term of media type and media type formatter if you have any doubts or any concern you can write it to me in the comment section thank you for watching